This is the first of two videos where I talk about factoring. I'm going to go over the factoring basics, sort of the elementary algebra part of factoring. And then in the next video, I want to go over the sort of the tougher factoring stuff you may see on the ACT. You also have a video on expounding, so check that out if you're a little on that. Now, factoring is absolutely, 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 I say that enough, a critical skill. It's absolutely crucial that you can factor and be very comfortable, accurate, and fairly quick with it. Now, when we talk about factoring, you typically think of two sets of parentheses, right? Like you did all throughout Algebra 2. But don't neglect that you can factor other kinds of equations. So typically you see it with quadratics, right? So x squared minus 4x equals 0. What you're used to seeing is x squared minus 4x plus some constant, plus 2 or whatever, equals 0. That's where you get those two sets of parentheses. I don't have a C term. Remember, uh, the general form of this is ax squared plus bx plus c. If you don't remember, don't worry about it. So what can I do here? I can't factor into two sets of parentheses without the constant term. But what I can do, these both of these terms share an x. I can pull an x out. Now, when I factor a quadratic, quadratic is just an equation with the highest power of 2, highest power of squared. I always want the equation set equal to 0 before I start. And of course, I already had it that way. What that lets me do is it lets me sort of draw a conclusion. Because I know that this x times x minus 4 is equal to 0, either x is equal to 0 or x minus 4 is equal to 0. And I can solve this little tiny equation here and get my second solution, x is equal to 4. There's two solutions. Quadratics will have two solutions. Maybe the same solution twice, but they will always have two solutions. Okay, now let's take a look at sort of the bread and butter factoring that you're most used to seeing, maybe most nervous about, whatever. There's three ways this works, and it all depends on the signs. So, first way that you see it is plus, uh, plus plus, right? And that would be a problem like x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 0. Now, let's say, for example, it's not equal to 0 for a second, just for a second. Let's say it's equal to negative 1. Well, I would want to set that equal to 0 by adding 1 to both sides. I would get plus plus one equals zero. Sorry for the smudge. Um, we can factor this into two sets of parentheses. To do that, we'll just start here. Now, the way it works is this. The first term in either set of parentheses, or both sets of parentheses, First term times first term will equal x squared. So what's that break down into? x and x. Okay. Now let's switch our attention. We'll skip the middle term for right this second. Let's look at the last term. The last term times the last term will equal 1. Okay. And it'll be a positive one. So there's two choices. This could be negative times negative, because a negative times a negative is a positive, or it could be positive times positive. To see which one it is, look at the middle sign. If the middle sign is positive, and the last the last sign's positive, middle sign's positive, you're gonna have plus plus. Now we're gonna bring that middle term back into play. I need two numbers that multiply together to equal one and add together to equal 2. Well, obviously, or maybe not so obviously, it's going to be 1 and 1. Now, using FOIL, you can check your work. This is last. First times first is x squared. Outer, x times 1 is plus x or 1x. Inner, 1 times x is plus x. And last, 1 times 1 is 1. So combine these two middle terms, x plus x is 2x. So you'll have x squared plus 2x plus 1. Let's take a look at the second case. So we went over plus plus, the two positive signs, 
in our parentheses. Second case will be plus minus. Excuse me. Let's do minus minus. Um, here's a good example. X squared minus 5x plus 4. Okay. So, two parentheses. Go ahead and get it set up. Our first term again, this times this equals x squared. It's going to be x and x again. Now let's deal with this last term to help us figure out our signs. We've got a positive 4. So there's two possibilities. Negative, negative, positive, positive. It'll be negative, negative because the middle sign is negative. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we fool this one out. Now I need two numbers that multiply together to equal positive 4 and add together to equal negative 5. Well, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, but they add together to negative 4. That doesn't work. The only other option with integers is negative 4 and negative 1. And that's what it is. Now, it doesn't matter where I put my negative 4 and my negative 1. Because up until the point that I place is negative 4 and negative 1, these are identical, x minus, x minus. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't affect anything at all. So now I'm ready to foil this out and check my answer. So x times x is x squared. Outer, x times negative 1, negative x. Inner, negative 4 times x is negative 4x. And last, negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. Combine my like terms, x squared minus 5x plus 4 equals 0. What, why do I do that? For no other reason than it checks my, my answer. If you have a tougher factoring problem, you, you kind of have to do that to make sure you're right. At least until, until you get really good at factoring. So let's say I wanted to find my solutions. I didn't find my solutions with my plus plus example just a little bit ago, but let's find the solutions here. I know that x minus 4 times x minus 1 is equal to 0. So either x minus 4 is equal to 0 or x minus 1 is equal to 0. So x, add 4 to both sides, is equal to 4 or x is equal to 1. Both solutions. Those would both be x-intercepts. Of your of a parabola. Cool. All right. So uh, for more on that, check out the the videos on functions in coordinate geometry and the material there. Let's look at our last case. The mixed signs. Now, for our intents and purposes, it doesn't matter if I say it's plus minus or minus plus. Same same thing. And here's an example problem. x squared plus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. All right. Notice the big difference. Before, we always had a positive in sign because positive times positive is positive. Negative times negative is positive. Now we have the, mix, the, the negative here. Whenever we have a negative at the end, we know we have mixed signs. Again, we're going to break this into two sets of parentheses, and it's going to lead with x and x. Since these fronts are the same, there's no coefficient. There's not like a 2x and just an x. Since they're the same, I can just stick my plus and my minus wherever I want. It doesn't matter. Where I put the back terms will matter. Why? Because these aren't identical anymore. x plus is not the same thing as x minus. So I have to place my numbers correctly. It actually matters now. How to tell where the bigger number goes on basically on simpler ones of these, which you, you usually will encounter uh, more straightforward mixed sign ones on, on the ACT. How to tell where the bigger number goes is based upon what the sign of the middle number is. So we need two numbers that multiply to negative 3 and add to positive 2. Okay, Since they add to the positive, the bigger number will go with that plus right here. Obviously, or maybe not obviously, it's going to be uh, 3 and 1. Well, which one will be negative? The 1 will be negative, right? 
and the three will be positive. One will be negative, three will be positive. And just like we did with the negative negatives, you'll see that the signs in the middle are based on these, these two calculations here, the outer and the inner. The only difference is that they conflict in this case, they're opposite signs. Foil it out to check that x squared, negative 1x plus 3x minus 3 equals 0, x squared plus 2x minus 3. Perfect, right? And of course, we can find our solutions. Remember, this is set equal to 0. And we have x plus 3 equals 0 and x minus 1 equals 0. Solve those little equations. x equals negative 3. x equals positive 1. Okay, now I've got the problem at the bottom of your screen. Let's tackle this. Now, this is not an uncommon setup. You've got two variables, and that really tends to intimidate people. But it's really no different. a squared plus 4ab plus 3b squared is equal to 0. Okay. So, lead off. Just find the first thing to do. Remember, break things into bite-sized pieces. I know I can draw two sets of parentheses, right? And then when I look, I say, well, this isn't too bad, right? A times A will be A squared, so I can handle that. Now, my signs. This, the two variables don't change how I deal with signs. Last sign is positive, so it's either plus plus or minus minus. Middle sign is positive, so it's plus plus. Plus and plus. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. I would probably just deal with the B's first, but you can deal with the numbers first if you want. I'm thinking to myself, I need two things that multiply together to equal B squared. Well, that's got to be B and B, right? Now I just have to deal with these numbers. Just think about them a little bit separately, I guess. I need two numbers that multiply to 3 and add to 4. Well, 3 and 1. So one of these will just be. 3b and the other one will just be 1b or just b. doesn't matter where I put the 3 and where I put the 1 because a plus and a plus are identical to each other. Now I foil a squared first plus ab plus 3ab plus 3b squared equals 0. Combine these two for ab and it's done. We have, we, we can get back to our original answer. Now, they're not really going to ask you for solutions on something like this. I mean, most likely not. But you can kind of come up with an algebraic solution. You would say a plus 3b equals 0. a plus b equals 0. So you could say that if you wanted this solution in terms of a, a is equal to 3b, right? Uh, negative 3b, excuse me, or that a is equal to negative b. That's really all as far as you could take it, unless you had something to plug in. Now, the plug-in stuff, you will see that on the SAT more. Check out the next video on intermediate quadratics. It's really, really helpful in expanding the way you think about quadratics and dealing with the um, tougher quadratics. What you're increasingly likely to see, I estimate they're on half to three quarters of tasks, there'll be one tough quadratic problem.